brothers and sisters, knowing something is quite different from knowing about something. For example, you may know something about me, but you know, in order to know me, it's quite different because you don't know what is in here. <laughs> See, that's different. So sometimes we we think we may know something. And then until, you know, someone or something may help us to understand it better. Oh, and then we see that. Ah, exactly what we have heard from the readings, you know, first from the Acts of the Apostles. Now Peter has the courage to tell the people this. The Lord Jesus Christ. And you denied him. You denied the holy, the righteous one, and asked that a murderer be released to you. I'm talking about the people of Israel. And now, God raised him from the dead. Of this, we know for sure. And now, you know, because, because he said he know that brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment that he has announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer because you did something without knowing it. Now better for you to repent and be converted and that your sins may be washed away. Wow, because of the knowing wrong one. And God have that, God gave them the chance to go back and many people, many people, you know, repented and were baptized. As we read along, you know, the Acts of the Apostle. Second reading. St. John reminds us, if you say that you know Christ, what should we do? We should keep his commandments. And if we, you say that I know him and I don't care about his commandments, you, you know nothing. <laughs> that is liars and the truth is not in them. Knowing God. That is the way how we tell the people. From the uh, Gospel according to St. Luke, you know, we should read the, um, the previous, uh, you know, sections of, of this Gospel and recall to mind that the story of the two disciples from the um, on the road of uh, Emmaus. You still remember that one? Okay, exactly. They thought that they knew something, okay? They thought that they knew something about, about Jesus. That they, you know, when Jesus appeared to them and they could not recognize him, they thought that he is the stranger. And then they told that stranger, that's, we hope that he will become a leader of the Israel. And then now, you know, everything's gone. He, he was crucif crucified on the cross and he died. And we thought that, you know, he, he's such a, a prophet. See, even the disciples. And then what happened to them? Jesus, that's the stranger. 
opens their mind to the scripture, to the scriptures, and helps them to understand. Wow. And what happened to them inside of them? The burning. And then because of that, and they invited him to stay with them. And during the uh, breaking of the bread, they recognized him as Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, that's what we experience in the Eucharist every time we are here. Recognize him as our Lord, our Savior. And many at times we read the scriptures, right? And we don't feel anything in here. <laughs> Still cold in here. And uh, many times we attend the Eucharist. And our eyes could not open because of the uncertainties of life. As you know, the disciples experience on the road. Despair, hopeless. And we can, could not open our eyes to his presence. Yes, because many times we listen to the word of God, or even we study, or we read the scriptures. We read it by our own, or listen to it, and then after we get out of here, through the doors, we forget. And we don't feel anything from here. At the time that we attend the Eucharist, our eyes, you know, just wandering something, right? We don't recognize his presence because we don't do it with him. We don't read the scripture with Jesus. We don't attend the Eucharist with him. We do it by our own. That's why there's nothing in us. And when we listen to the word of God, when we study the scriptures, when we read the passage from the gospel, we do it with him. Right? And also when we celebrate the Eucharist, we celebrate the Eucharist with Jesus Christ, our Savior. And here is how we experience the, the presence of the Lord, because we keep inviting him into our life to stay with us. We don't stay home, you know, and think that, okay, God will be with me. No, we have to invite him. We have to, to have the desire to be with him. That's why every time, 11 o'clock, we are here to have that experience, to know that in, in any aspect of life, you know, if the Lord is with us, He is traveling with us, we are fine to move forward. You know, we, we can see that the, uh, how frustrated that the disciple may have on the road. We too, this past year, and we are experienced, you know, the wrath, right? It is not easy, but keep inviting him to help us to understand life and keep inviting him to be with us that we can recognize his presence and if we have the Lord in our hearts, we can move forward. We can overcome the challenges and difficulties in life. Brothers and sisters, keep it up. That is the grace of God. You know, he can pour the grace, his grace into our life. Thank you for listening. Please stand and profess our faith.